What's up everyone and welcome back to part two of our paint and build. Uh, real quick, we're jumping right into this immediately and I'm using some Tamiya extra thin cement to seal down some of these loose turrets which will become a problem later down the line when trying to airbrush the colors on. Now, I absolutely love Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Uh, the reason for this is because it's so thin that it will actually go through those thin crevices and uh, melt the plastic evenly. Um, the Tamiya regular cement is just a little bit too thick for me, so I definitely prefer this for the skills of models I've been working with. For the primer, I'm going to be using Badger's Steinol Res Gray and one part water. You definitely want to shake this very, very well uh, up to about a minute. Get those pigments all mixed up in there and uh, get it ready for prime. Let's fast forward. I'm gonna be using my Badger R3 Renegade airbrush. Um, at the moment, I didn't receive the Masters airbrush, which I just ordered. Uh, it has a bigger needle. Um, I'm gonna to try to squeeze this primer the best I can through a .2. It's not recommended. It is recommended to be used with a .3 or even better, a .5. But let's see how this goes.
so finally got it in the new masters airbrush i ordered got this for 40 bucks uh it's a great set it's the g233 set uh runs about 40 like i said and comes with three needles and three tips comes with a 0 0.2 0 0.3 and a 0.5 uh, which is brilliant and being that this is going to be the first time using it uh, i'll give you a later video with a full review so let's get to it um we are going to be painting the smaller ship a dark green and for that we're going to be using Mr. Hobby Aquios number 36, dark green, and a gloss. And we'll be thinning that with Mr. Color Thinner Thinner. Uh, Mr. Color Thinner Thinner, yeah. And we'll be doing, of course, one part mixed paint and one part thinner. Of course, you want to get that milky consistency. For the larger ship, we're gonna have to mix our Garmilla's green from interior green, bright green, off-white, and an IGA green. We're gonna be mixing uh, a small amounts of each of these, of course, thinning them down to come up with this brilliant Garmilla's green.
Now for the battleship thrusters, I'm gonna use Mr. Hobby's Aquiel's Shine Red and Yellow. That's number 23 and number four. Now these battleships have these translucent thrusters and in the pictures, you have two options. You can do the full yellow with the red gradient or this neon green kind of look to it. Um, the person who hired me actually wanted the yellow thrusters with the red gradient uh, in the front, so that's what we're gonna do. Now the smaller battleship has four small thrusters and the bigger battleship has two. So we're gonna go over this with thin layers and of course making sure that this is evenly covered. And then of course, once all the thrusters are painted, we're just gonna quickly clean this out. We're not gonna give it a full clean and then just throw the shine red right on top of this and what we're doing is looking for a tiny, tiny gradient at the tips and a blend into the yellow uh, to kind of simulate some kind of thrust or fire. And let's see how it comes out. For the ship's bases, we're gonna mix some Tamiya lacquer thinner with Mr. Hoppy uh, Aquil Steel, it's number 18, it's a semi-gloss. Um, my thought process, of course, is the bases should be too, too uh, brilliant in the colors. Uh, we don't want them to um, overdo the models themselves. So I feel the steel is a great neutral color. It has a little bit of glitter, some metallic feel to it, so it, it it's still interesting while not taken fully away from the two battleships. Now, because I'm still learning myself, um, when I primed the bases, I left some marks. So we're just gonna sand down uh, these imperfections, get this out of the way right now, since I have the uh, airbrush loaded with the steel paint still. We're gonna wipe them down quickly and then just repaint right over. I love how the smaller battleship has these gradients that I purposely left um, from the primer itself. And here is the engine or the back part of that, which I also painted a dark steel. Now the client doesn't want any kind of weathering on here. He wants these models to be as close as possible to the uh, fan art on the box. So that's what we're doing here. And as you can see, I masked the engine and it came out perfect. Thank you. 
Now that we have everything painted and out of the way, it's time to assemble all the small, tiny, meticulous pieces that I held off to this point because honestly, if we put them on early, there is a big chance that they fall off or break while we're working around or painting around the models. So I usually keep these tiny pieces uh, for last. And again, we're gonna be using Tamiya's extra thin cement to get these all applied. And as you can see here, we're going to be fast forwarding uh, just so we can get through this video and keep it pretty short. Overall, I'm pretty happy how both of these models came out. Um, I master thrusters and the engines once again. Um, I feel I can do a better job at covering some of these colors and giving it more of a realistic gradient. Uh, we're also gonna varnish or top coat both of these models to protect the colors that we're putting on. We're gonna be working with a Garmilla's green that we put together earlier, as well as the dark green from Mr. Hobby uh, to get this uh, effects applied. And we're doing this once more just to ensure that the ships are all evenly blended and properly colored before we jump into the panel lining.
with some diluted Mr. Hobby Aquil Shine Red. We're gonna paint some of these rocket ports, uh, simulating some loaded rockets on these battleships. Now comes the hard part for me. We're gonna be using Mr. Hobby's Aquiles Orange Yellow, or number 24, of course, again, gloss. Um, the hard part is painting the bridge windows. Now, this is extremely hard because I don't have such steady hands. And on top of that challenge, trying to do this in front of camera makes it even a lot harder, but we're gonna do the best that we can here, especially since these bridge windows are extremely tiny. Um, luckily, I do have a good set of brushes. What we're gonna be using here is a double zero and a triple zero. So stay tuned, let's see how this comes out. Also, while we're at it, I'm going to use a bit of Tamiya's gunmetal, and we're going to thin this out as thin as possible, uh, make it almost like a wash to put over these, what I believe are uh, giant missile ports or exhaust or of some, of some sorts. It looks interesting, nonetheless. We're going to put some gunmetal in there, again, almost like a wash, and just run it through a couple passes just to give it that look that I'm looking for. just varnish these but here's a good look at both of the battleships and all the details that we've been working on so far uh, you can see the bridge work the rocket or missile launchers uh, you can see the missile launchers on the side here the turrets and all the details that we put into this next we're going to be working with the small satellite we're going to be painting the port and the uh, front of this with a burnt orange AK interactive leather piece. I, it runs really, really well. Um, in other words, it paints smoothly. I, I believe it flows really well is what I meant to say. So we're gonna be using this to kind of give it highlights before we uh, varnish this and go into the panel lighting. Since we're not doing any major weathering, we're gonna jump right into the panel lighting using Tamiya Black Panel Liner. Uh, and of 
course, using the capillary effect to get this done in a hastily manner. And what I mean by hastily is that I'm not so uh, clean per se, because I'm gonna use the cleanup process to give the ships that slight weathering effect as if, yes, they're brand new, but of course there's space, they're hitting debris, they're flying into dust. So they do have some natural grit to the paint. So we're hoping to get that effect with the black panel here. Now let's clean this panel lining up. We're gonna be using AK Interactive's uh, White Spirits and a ton of cotton swabs. Uh, make sure that your cotton swabs are not drenched in the white spirits. You don't want to erase the work that you just did. You want to clean up. And we're gonna be working in one motion from front to back uh, to simulate some of the weathering that naturally occurs with ships uh, that fly in the air or in space in that matter. So let's see how this comes out.
I wasn't quite happy how the panel lighting was coming out, so ultimately I went to a gun the marker and uh, finished off the rest of it that I wasn't getting. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty impressed. It came up pretty well on the dark green, uh, which is the reason why I switched over to the Gundam marker, because the dark green for some reason was just overpowering the Tamiya's panel lining. It just wasn't looking good. But after the Gundam marker was applied, I think it looks 10 times better. What do you guys think? Hey, I'm almost done with my video here and my time. Of course, make sure if you like what you see to subscribe, hit that bell. I'm gonna include some of the links below. Um, I'm not making any money off this, but it's to help fellow modelers out there to get some equipment in their hands, to get some ideas of what I used to get these models done. Now, I almost forgot the solar panels. Now for that, we're gonna use Vallejo's Liquid Silver. Silver, And since this is an alcohol paint, we're gonna be using 91% alcohol and a cheapy brush to apply the silver on there.
and here's the final product. I'm really happy how these two Gomerlis battleships came out. The client was ecstatic when he received these, was thrilled how the paint jobs came out. Actually he's sending two more. I'm very lucky and fortunate to be receiving even more work and models, which means more videos that I can bring to you guys. So if you genuinely like the video, of course, give it a like, smash that bell and subscribe if you wanna support me. And if you care about scale modeling as a hobby, you wanna see me grow, I would love to grow with you. Uh, well, my name is Kevin Matamoros, reporting from Gut Z Studio, and I hope to see you all again soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and I'll see you all soon.